Alif Lam Mim. This is the book. In it is guidance sure without doubt to those who fear Allah, who believe in the unseen, are steadfast in prayer, and spend out of what we have provided for them, and who believe in the revelation, sent to you and sent before your time, and in their hearts have the assurance of the hereafter. They are on true guidance from their Lord, and it is these who will prosper. As to those who reject faith, it is the same to them, whether you warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing, and on their eyes is a veil. Great is the penalty they incur. Of the people there are some who say, We believe in Allah and the last day, but they do not really believe. Fain would they deceive Allah and those who believe, but they only deceive themselves and realize it not. In their hearts is a disease, and Allah has increased their disease, and grievous is the penalty they incur, because they are false to themselves. When it is said to them, Make not mischief on the earth, they say, Why? We only want to make peace. Of a surety, they are the ones who make mischief, but they realize it not. When it is said to them, Believe as the others believe, they say, Shall we believe as the fools believe? Nay, of a surety they are the fools, but they do not know. When they meet those who believe, they say, We believe. But when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, We are really with you, we are only jesting. Allah will throw back their mockery on them, and give them rope in their trespasses, so they will wander like blind ones to and fro. These are they who have bartered guidance for error. But their traffic is profitless, and they have lost true direction. Their similitude is that of a man who kindled a fire. When it lighted all around him, Allah took away their light, and left them in utter darkness, so they could not see. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they will not return to the path. Or another similitude is that of a rain-laden cloud from the sky. In it are zones of darkness, and thunder and lightning. They press their fingers in their ears to keep out the stunning thunderclap, the while they are in terror of death. But Allah is ever round the rejecters of faith. The lightning all but snatches away their sight. Every time the light helps them, they walk therein, and when the darkness grows on them, they stand still. And if Allah willed, he could take away their faculty of hearing and seeing. For Allah has power over all things. O you people, adore your guardian Lord, who created you, and those who came before you, that you may become righteous, who has made the earth your couch, and the heavens your canopy, and sent down rain from the heavens, and brought forth therewith fruits for your sustenance. Then set up not rivals unto Allah, when you know the truth. And if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed from time to time to our servant, then produce a surah like thereunto, and call your witnesses or helpers, if there are any besides Allah, if your doubts are true. But if you cannot, and of a surety you cannot, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones, which is prepared for those who reject faith. But give glad tidings to those who believe and work righteousness that their portion is gardens, neath which rivers flow. Every time they are fed with fruits therefrom, they say, Why, this is what we were fed with before. For they are given things in similitude, and they have therein companions pure and holy, and they abide therein forever. Allah disdains not to use the similitude of things, lowest as well as highest. Those who believe know that it is truth from their Lord, but those who reject faith say, What means Allah by this similitude? By it he causes many to stray, and many he leads into the right path, but he causes not to stray, except those who forsake the path. Those who break Allah's covenant after it is ratified, and who sunder what Allah has ordered to be joined, and who do mischief on earth, 
these cause loss only to themselves. How can you reject the faith in Allah, seeing that you were without life, and He gave you life? Then will He cause you to die, and will again bring you to life, and again to Him will you return. It is He who has created for you all things that are on earth. Then He turned to the heaven, and made them into seven firmaments, and of all things He has perfect knowledge. Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I will create a vicegerent on earth. They said, Will you place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood, whilst we do celebrate your praises and glorify your holy name? He said, I know what you know not. And he taught Adam the names of all the things. Then he placed them before the angels and said, Tell me the names of these if you are right. They said, Glory to you of knowledge, we have none, save what you have taught us. In truth, it is you who are perfect in knowledge and wisdom. He said, O Adam, tell them their names. When he had told them, Allah said, Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of heaven and earth, and I know what you reveal and what you conceal? And behold, we said to the angels, Bow down to Adam, and they bowed down. Not so Iblis, he refused, and was haughty, and he was of those who reject faith. We said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden, and eat of the bountiful things therein, as where and when you will, but approach not this tree, or you will run into harm and transgression. Then did Satan make them slip from the garden, and get them out of the state of felicity in which they had been. We said, Get you down, all you people. With enmity between yourselves, on earth will be your dwelling place, and your means of livelihood, for a time. Then learnt Adam from his Lord words of inspiration, and his Lord turned towards him, for he is oft returning, most merciful. We said, Get you down all from here, and if, as is sure, there comes to you guidance from me, whosoever follows my guidance, on them shall be no fear nor shall they grieve. But those who reject faith and belie our signs, they shall be companions of the fire, they shall abide therein. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you, and fulfill your covenant with me as I fulfill my covenant with you, and fear none but me. And believe in what I reveal, confirming the revelation which is with you, and be not the first to reject faith therein, nor sell my signs for a small price, and fear me, and me alone. And cover not truth with falsehood, nor conceal the truth when you know what it is. And be steadfast in prayer, practice regular charity, and bow down your heads with those who bow down in worship. Do you enjoin right conduct on the people, and forget to practice it yourselves? And yet you study the scripture, will you not understand? Nay, seek Allah's help with patient perseverance and prayer. It is indeed hard, except to those who bring a lowly spirit, who bear in mind the certainty that they are to meet their Lord, and that they... O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you, and that I preferred you to all others for my message. Then guard yourselves against a day, when one soul shall not avail another, nor shall intercession be accepted for her, nor shall compensation be taken from her, nor shall anyone be helped from outside. And remember, we delivered you from the people of Pharaoh, they set you hard tasks and punishments, slaughtered your sons, and let your womenfolk live, therein was a tremendous trial from your Lord. And remember, we divided the sea for you, and saved you and drowned Pharaoh's people within your very sight. And remember, we appointed forty nights for Moses, and in his absence, you took the calf for worship, and you did grievous wrong. Even then we did forgive you. There was a chance for you to be grateful. And remember, we gave Moses the scripture and the criterion. Between right and wrong, there was a chance for you to be guided aright.
And remember Moses said to his people, O my people, you have indeed wronged yourselves by your worship of the calf. So turn in repentance to your Maker, and slay yourselves the wrongdoers. That will be better for you in the sight of your Maker. Then he turned towards you in forgiveness, for he is oft returning, most merciful. And remember, you said, O Moses, we shall never believe in you until we see Allah manifestly. But you were dazed by thunder and lightning, even as you looked on. Then we raised you up after your death. You had the chance to be grateful. And we gave you the shade of clouds, and sent down to you manna and quails, saying, Eat of the good things we have provided for you. But they rebelled. To us they did no harm, but they harmed their own soul. And remember, we said, Enter this town, and eat of the plenty therein as you wish. But enter the gate with humility, in posture and in words, and we shall forgive you your faults, and increase the portion of those who do good. But the transgressors changed the word from that which had been given them. So we sent on the transgressors a plague from heaven, for that they infringed our command repeatedly. And remember Moses prayed for water for his people. We said, Strike the rock with your staff. Then gushed forth therefrom twelve springs. Each group knew its own place for water. So eat and drink of the sustenance provided by Allah, and do no evil nor mischief on the face of the earth. And remember you said, O Moses, we cannot endure one kind of food always. So beseech your Lord for us, to produce for us of what the earth grows, its pot herbs and cucumbers, its garlic, lentils and onions. He said, Will you exchange the better for the worse? Go you down to any town, and you shall find what you want. They were covered with humiliation and misery. They drew on themselves the wrath of Allah. This because they went on rejecting the signs of Allah and slaying his messengers without just cause. This because they rebelled and went on transgressing. Those who believe in the Quran and those who follow the Jewish scriptures and the Christians and the Sabians, any who believe in Allah and the last day and work righteousness shall have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear nor shall they grieve. And remember we took your covenant, and we raised above you the towering height of Mount Sinai, saying, Hold firmly to what we have given you, and bring ever to remembrance what is therein. Perhaps you may fear Allah. But you turned back thereafter. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of Allah to you, you had surely been among the lost. And well you know those amongst you who transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath. We said to them, Be you apes, despised and rejected. So we made it an example to their own time, and to their posterity, and a lesson to those who fear Allah. And remember Moses said to his people, Allah commands that you sacrifice a cow. They said, Are you making a laughing stock of us? He said, Allah save me from being an ignorant fool. They said, Beseech on our behalf, your Lord, to make plain to us what cow it is. He said, He says, The cow should be neither too old nor too young, but of middling age. Now do what you are commanded. They said, Beseech on our behalf, your Lord, to make plain to us her color. He said, He says a fawn-colored cow, pure and rich in tone, the admiration of beholders. They said, Beseech on our behalf, your Lord, to make plain to us what she is. To us are all cows alike. We wish indeed for guidance. If Allah wills, he said, He says a cow not trained to till the soil or water the fields, sound and without blemish. They said, Now have you brought the truth. Then they offered her in sacrifice, but not with goodwill. Remember you slew a man and fell into a dispute among yourselves as to the crime. But Allah was to bring forth what you did hide. So we said, Strike the body with a piece of the cow, 
Thus Allah brings the dead to life and shows you his signs. Perchance you may understand. Thenceforth were your hearts hardened. They became like a rock, and even worse in hardness. For among rocks there are some from which rivers gush forth. Others, their which when split asunder send forth water. And others, which sink for fear of Allah. And Allah is not unmindful of what you do. Can you, O oh you men of faith, entertain the hope that they will believe in you, seeing that a party of them heard the word of Allah, and perverted it knowingly after they understood it? Behold, when they meet the men of faith, they say, We believe. But when they meet each other in private, they say, Shall you tell them what Allah has revealed to you, that they may engage you in argument about it before your Lord? Do you not understand their aim? Know they not that Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal. And there are among them illiterates who know not the book, but see therein their own desires, and they do nothing but conjecture. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands, and then say, This is from Allah, to traffic with it for a miserable price. Woe to them for what their hands do right, and for the gain they make thereby. And they say, The fire shall not touch us, but for a few numbered days. Say, Have you taken a promise from Allah? For he never breaks his promise. Or is it that you say of Allah what you do not know? Nay, those who seek gain in evil, and are girt round by their sins, they are companions of the fire. Therein shall they abide forever. But those who have faith and work righteousness, they are companions of the garden. Therein shall they abide forever. And remember, we took a covenant from the children of Israel to this effect. Worship none but Allah. Treat with kindness your parents and kindred, and orphans, and those in need. Speak fair to the people. Be steadfast in prayer, and practice regular charity. Then did you turn back? except a few among you, and you backslide even now. And remember, we took your covenant to this effect. Shed no blood amongst you, nor turn out your own people from your homes. And this you solemnly ratified, and to this you can bear witness. After this it is you, the same people, who slay among yourselves, and banish a party of you from their homes, assist their enemies against them, in guilt, and transgression, and if they come to you as captives, you ransom them, though it was not lawful for you to banish them. Then is it only a part of the book that you believe in? And do you reject the rest? But what is the reward for those among you who behave like this, but disgrace in this life? And on the day of judgment, they shall be consigned to their most grievous penalty, for Allah is not unmindful of what you do. These are the people who buy the life of this world at the price of the hereafter. Their penalty shall not be lightened, nor shall they be helped. We gave Moses the book and followed him up with a succession of messengers. We gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. Is it that whenever there comes to you a messenger with what you yourselves desire not, you are puffed up with pride? Some you call impostors, and others you slay. They say, Our hearts are the wrappings which preserve Allah's word. We need no more. Nay, Allah's curse is on them for their blasphemy. Little is it they believe. And when there comes to them a book from Allah, confirming what is with them, although from old they had prayed for victory against those without faith, when there comes to them that which they should have recognized, they refuse to believe in it, but the curse of Allah is on those without faith. Miserable is the price for which they have sold their souls, in that they deny the revelation which Allah has sent down, in insolent envy that Allah of His grace should send it to any of His servants He pleases. Thus have they drawn on themselves wrath upon wrath, and humiliating is the punishment of those who reject faith. When it is said to them, Believe in what Allah has sent down, they say, We believe in what was sent down to us. 
yet they reject all besides, even if it be truth, confirming what is with them. Say, why then have you slain the prophets of Allah in times gone by, if you did indeed believe? There came to you Moses with clear signs, yet you worshipped the calf, even after that, and you did behave wrongly. And remember, we took your covenant, and we raised above you the towering height of Mount Sinai, saying, Hold firmly to what we have given you, and hearken to the law. They said, We hear, and we disobey, and they had to drink into their hearts of the taint of the calf, because of their faithlessness. Say, Bile indeed are the behests of your faith, if you have any faith. Say, If the last home with Allah be for you specially, and not for anyone else, then seek you for death if you are sincere. But they will never seek for death on account of the sins, which their hands have sent on before them, and the lies well acquainted with the wrongdoers. You will indeed find them, of all people, most greedy of life, even more than the idolaters. Each one of them wishes he could be given a life of a thousand years. But the grant of such life will not save him from due punishment, for Allah sees well all that they do. Say, whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, for he brings down the revelation to your heart by Allah's will, a confirmation of what went before, and guidance and glad tidings for those who believe. Whoever is an enemy to Allah and his angels and prophets, to Gabriel and Michael, lo, Allah is an enemy to those who reject faith. We have sent down to you manifest signs, and none reject them but those who are perverse. Is it not the case that every time they make a covenant, some party among them throw it aside? Nay, most of them are faithless. And when there came to them a messenger from Allah, confirming what was with them, a party of the people of the book threw away the book of Allah behind their backs as if it had been something they did not know. They followed what the evil ones gave out falsely against the power of Solomon. The blasphemers were not Solomon, but the evil ones, teaching men magic and such things, as came down at Babylon to the angels Harut and Marut. But neither of these taught anyone such things, without saying, We are only for trial, so do not blaspheme. They learned from them the means to sow discord between man and wife. But they could not thus harm anyone except by Allah's permission. And they learnt what harmed them, not what profited them. And they knew what the buyers of magic would have, no share in the happiness of the year after. And vile was the price for which they did sell their souls, if they but knew. If they had kept their faith and guarded themselves from evil, far better had been the reward from their Lord, if they but knew. O oh, you of faith! Say not to the prophet words of ambiguous import, but words of respect, and hearken to him. To those without faith is a grievous punishment. It is never the wish of those without faith among the people of the book, nor of the pagans, that anything good should come down to you from your Lord. But Allah will choose for his special mercy whom he will, for Allah is Lord of grace abounding. None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Know you not that Allah has power over all things? Know you not that to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and besides him you have neither patron nor helper? Would you question your messenger as Moses was questioned of old? But whoever changes from faith to unbelief has strayed without doubt from the even way. Quite a number of the people of the book wish they could turn you people back to infidelity after you have believed, from selfish envy, after the truth has become manifest unto them. But forgive and overlook till Allah accomplishes his purpose, for Allah has power over all things. And be steadfast in prayer and regular in charity, and whatever good you send forth for your souls before you, you shall find it with Allah, for Allah sees well all that you do. And they say, None shall enter paradise unless he be a Jew or a Christian. Those are their vain desires. Say, 
Produce your proof if you are truthful. Nay, whoever submits his whole self to Allah and is a doer of good, he will get his reward with his Lord. On such shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. The Jews say, The Christians have naught to stand upon. And the Christians say, The Jews have naught to stand upon. Yet they profess to study the same book. Like unto their word is what those say who know not. But Allah will judge between them in their quarrel on the day of judgment. And who is more unjust than he who forbids that in places for the worship of Allah, his name should be celebrated, whose zeal is in fact to ruin them? It was not fitting that such should themselves enter them except in fear. For them there is nothing but disgrace in this world, and in the world to come, an exceeding torment. To Allah belong the East and the West. Wherever you turn, there is Allah's countenance. For Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. They say, Allah has begotten a son. Glory be to him. Nay, to him belongs all that is in the heavens and on earth. Everything renders worship to him. To him is due the primal origin of the heavens and the earth. When he decrees a matter, he says to it, Be. And it is. Say those without knowledge, Why speaks not Allah unto us? Or why comes not unto us a sign? So said the people before them, Words of similar import. Their hearts are alike. We have indeed made clear the signs unto any people who hold firmly to faith in their hearts. Verily, we have sent you in truth as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner. But of you no question shall be asked of the companions of the blazing fire. Never will the Jews or the Christians be satisfied with you unless you follow their form of religion. Say, the guidance of Allah, that is the only guidance. Were you to follow their desires after the knowledge which has reached you, then would you find neither protector nor helper against Allah. Those to whom we have sent the book study it as it should be studied. They are the ones that believe therein. Those who reject faith therein, the loss is their own. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you, and that I preferred you to all others for my message. Then guard yourselves against a day when one soul shall not avail another, nor shall compensation be accepted from her nor shall intercession profit her, nor shall anyone be helped from outside. And remember that Abram was tried by his Lord with certain commands, which he fulfilled. He said, I will make thee an imam to the nations. He pleaded, and also imams from my offspring. He answered, But my promise is not within the reach of evildoers. Remember, we made the house a place of assembly for men and a place of safety, and take you the station of Abram as a place of prayer. And we covenanted with Abram and Ishmael that they should sanctify my house for those who compass it round or use it as a retreat or bow or prostrate themselves therein in prayer. And remember, Abram said, My Lord, make this a city of peace and feed its people with fruits such of them as believe in Allah and the last day. He said, Yea, and such as reject faith. For a while will I grant them their pleasure, but will soon drive them to the torment of fire, an evil destination indeed. And remember Abram and Ismail raised the foundations of the house with this prayer. Our Lord, accept this service from us, for Thou art the All-Hearing, the All-Knowing. Our Lord, Make of us Muslims, bowing to thy will, and of our progeny a people Muslim, bowing to thy will. And show us our places for the celebration of due rites, and turn unto us in mercy, for thou art the oft-returning, most merciful. Our Lord, send amongst them a messenger of their own, who shall rehearse your signs to them, and instruct them in scripture and wisdom, and sanctify them. For you are the exalted in might, the wise and who turns away from the religion of Abram, but such as debase their souls with folly. 
Him we chose and rendered pure in this world, and He will be in the hereafter in the ranks of the righteous. Behold, his Lord said to him, Bow thy will to me. He said, I bow my will to the Lord and cherisher of the universe. And this was the legacy that Abram left to his sons, and so did Jacob. O oh, my sons, Allah has chosen the faith for you. Then die not except in the state of submission to Allah. Were you witnesses when death appeared before Jacob? Behold, he said to his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship your God, and the God of your fathers, of Abram, Ismail, Isaac, the one true God, to him we bow in Islam. That was a people that has passed away. They shall reap the fruit of what they did, and you of what you do. Of their merits there is no question in your case. They say, Become Jews or Christians if you would be guided to salvation. Say you nay, I would rather the religion of Abram the true, and he join not gods with Allah. Say you we believe in Allah, and the revelation given to us, and to Abram, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants, children of Jacob, and that given to Moses, and Jesus, and that given to all prophets from their Lord. We make no difference between one and another of them, and we bow to Allah in Islam. So if they believe as you believe, they are indeed on the right path. But if they turn back, it is they who are in schism. But Allah will suffice you as against them, and He is the All-Hearing, the All-Knowing. Our religion is the color of Allah, and who can color better than Allah? And it is He whom we worship. Say, Will you dispute with us about Allah, seeing that He is our Lord and your Lord? That we are responsible for our doings and you for yours? And that we are sincere in our faith to Him? Or do you say that Abram, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants were Jews or Christians? Say, Do you know better than Allah? Ah, who is more unjust than those who conceal the testimony they have from Allah? But Allah is not unmindful of what you do. That was a people that has passed away. They shall reap the fruit of what they did, and you of what you do. Of their merits, there is no question in your case. The fools among the people will say, What has turned them from the Qibla, to which they were used? Say, To Allah belong east and west. He guides whom he will to a way that is straight. Thus have we made of you an ummah justly balanced, that you might be witnesses over the nations, and the messenger a witness over yourselves. And we appointed the Qibla, to which you are used, only to test those who followed the messenger from those who would turn on their heels from the faith. Indeed, it was a change momentous, except to those guided by Allah, and never would Allah make your faith of no effect. For Allah is to all people most surely full of kindness. Most merciful. We see the turning of your face for guidance to the heavens. Now shall we turn you to a Qibla that shall please you. Turn then your face in the direction of the sacred mosque. Wherever you are, turn your faces in that direction. The people of the book know well that that is the truth from their Lord. Nor is Allah unmindful of what they do. Even if you were to bring to the people of the book all the signs together, they would not follow your Qibla, nor you going to follow their Qibla, nor indeed will they follow each other's Qibla. If you, after the knowledge has reached you, were to follow their vain desires, then were you indeed clearly in the wrong. The people of the book know this as they know their own sons, but some of them conceal the truth, which they themselves know. The truth is from your Lord, so be not at all in doubt. To each is a goal to which Allah turns him. Then strive together as in a race towards all that is good. Wheresoever you are, Allah will bring you together, for Allah has power over all things. From wheresoever you start forth, turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque. That is indeed the truth from your Lord, and Allah is not unmindful of what you do. So, 
from wherever you start forth, turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque, and wherever you are, turn your face there, that there be no ground or dispute against you among the people, except those of them that are bent on wickedness. So fear them not, but fear me, that I may complete my favors on you, and you may consent to be guided. A similar favor have you already received, in that we have sent among you a messenger of your own, rehearsing to you our signs, and purifying you, and instructing you in scripture and wisdom, and in new knowledge. Then do you remember me, I will remember you, be grateful to me, and reject not faith. O you who believe, seek help with patient perseverance and prayer. For Allah is with those who patiently persevere. And say not of those who are slain in the way of Allah, they are dead. Nay, they are living, though you perceive it not. Be sure we shall test you with something of fear and hunger, some loss in goods or lives or the fruits of your toil. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, who say when afflicted with calamity, to Allah we belong, and to Him is our return. They are those on whom descend blessings from their Lord, and mercy, and they are the ones that receive guidance. Behold, Sofa and Marwa are among the symbols of Allah, so if those who visit the house in the season, or at other times, should compass them round, it is no sin in them, and if anyone obeys his own impulse to good, be sure that Allah is He who recognizes and knows. Those who conceal the clear signs we have sent down and the guidance, after we have made it clear for the people in the book, on them shall be Allah's curse, and the curse of those entitled to curse. Except those who repent and make amends and openly declare the truth to them I turn, for I am oft returning, most merciful. Those who reject faith and die rejecting, on them is Allah's curse, and the curse of angels, and of all mankind. They will abide therein, their penalty will not be lightened, nor will respite be their lot. And your God is one God, there is no God but He, most gracious, most merciful. Behold, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and the day, in the sailing of the ships through the ocean for the profit of mankind, in the rain which Allah sends down from the skies, and the life which He gives therewith to an earth that is dead, in the beasts of all kind that He scatters through the earth, in the change of the winds, and the clouds which they trail like their slaves between the sky and the earth, here indeed are signs for a people that are wise. Yet there are men who take for worship others besides Allah, as equal with Allah. They love them as they should love Allah. But those of faith are overflowing in their love for Allah. If only the unrighteous could see, behold, they would see the punishment that to Allah belongs all power, and Allah will strongly enforce the punishment. Then would those who are followed clear themselves of those who follow them, they would see the penalty, and all relations between them would be cut off. And those who followed would say, If only we had one more chance, we would clear ourselves of them, as they have cleared themselves of us. Thus will Allah show them the fruits of their deeds as nothing but regrets, nor will there be a way for them out of the fire. O oh, you people, eat of what is on earth lawful and good, and do not follow the footsteps of the evil one, for he is to you an avowed enemy. For he commands you what is evil and shameful, and that you should say of Allah that of which you have no knowledge. When it is said to them, Follow what Allah has revealed, they say, Nay, we shall follow the ways of our fathers. What? Even though their fathers were void of wisdom and guidance. The parable of those who reject faith is as if one were to shout like a goatherd to things that listen to nothing but calls and cries, deaf, dumb, 
and blind, they are void of wisdom. O you who believe, eat of the good things that we have provided for you, and be grateful to Allah, if it is Him you worship. He has only forbidden you dead meat, and blood, and the flesh of swine, and that on which any other name has been invoked besides that of Allah. But if one is forced by necessity, without willful disobedience, nor transgressing due limits, then is he guiltless? For Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Those who conceal Allah's revelations in the book and purchase for them a miserable profit, they swallow into themselves naught but fire. Allah will not address them on the day of resurrection, nor purify them. Grievous will be their penalty. They are the ones who buy error in place of guidance, and torment in place of forgiveness. Ah, what boldness they show for the fire. Their doom is because Allah sent down the book in truth, but those who seek causes of dispute in the book are in a schism, far from the purpose. It is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards east or west, but it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers to spend of your substance out of love for him, for your kin, for orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves, to be steadfast in prayer and practice regular charity, to fulfill the contracts which you have made, and to be firm and patient, in pain or suffering and adversity, and throughout all periods of panic, such are the people of truth. The God-fearing. O you who believe, the law of equality is prescribed to you in cases of murder, the free for the free, the slave for the slave, the woman for the woman. But if any remission is made by the brother of the slain, then grant any reasonable demand and compensate him with handsome gratitude. This is a concession and a mercy from your Lord. After this, whoever exceeds the limits shall be in grave penalty. In the law of equality, there is saving of life. To you, O you men of understanding, that you may restrain yourselves. It is prescribed when death approaches any of you, if he leave any goods, that he make a bequest to parents and next of kin. According to reasonable usage, this is due from the God-fearing. If anyone changes the bequest after hearing it, the guilt shall be on those who make the change, for Allah hears and knows all things. But if anyone fears partiality or wrongdoing on the part of the testator and makes peace between the parties concerned, there is no wrong in him, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you, as it was prescribed to those before you, that you may learn self-restraint. Fasting for a fixed number of days. But, if any of you is ill, or on a journey, the prescribed number should be made up from days later. For those who can do it with hardship is a ransom. The feeding of one that is indigent, but he that will give more of his own free will, it is better for him and... It is better for you that you fast, if you only knew. Ramadan is the month in which was sent down the Qur'an as a guide to mankind, also clear signs for guidance and judgment, between right and wrong. So every one of you who is present at his home during that month should spend it in fasting. But if anyone is ill or on a journey, the prescribed period should be made up by days later. Allah intends every facility for you. He does not want to put you to difficulties. He wants you to complete the prescribed period and to glorify Him in that He has guided you. And perhaps you shall be grateful. When my servants ask you concerning me, I am indeed close to them. I listen to the prayer of every suppliant when he calls on me. Let them also, with a will, listen to my call, and believe in me, that they may walk in the right way. Permitted to you on the night of the fasts, 
is the approach to your wives. They are your garments, and you are their garments. Allah knows what you used to do secretly among yourselves, but He turned to you and forgave you. So now, associate with them, and seek what Allah has ordained for you, and eat and drink, until the white thread of dawn appear to you, distinct from its black thread. Then, complete your fast till the night appears. But do not associate with your wives while you are in retreat in the mosques. Those are limits set by Allah. Approach not nigh thereto. Thus does Allah make clear His signs to men, that they may learn self-restraint. And do not eat up your property among yourselves for vanities, nor use it as a bait for the judges, with intent that you may eat up wrongfully and knowingly a little of other people's property. They ask you concerning the new moons. Say, they are but signs to mark fixed periods of time in the affairs of men and for pilgrimage. It is no virtue if you enter your houses from the back. It is virtue if you fear Allah. Enter houses through the proper doors and fear Allah that you may prosper. Fight in the cause of Allah those who fight you. But do not transgress limits. For Allah loves not transgressors. And slay them wherever you catch them, and turn them out from where they have turned you out. For tumult and oppression are worse than slaughter. But fight them not at the sacred mosque, unless they first fight you there. But if they fight you, slay them. Such is the reward of those who suppress faith. But if they cease, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And fight them on until there is no more tumult or oppression, and there prevail justice and faith in Allah. But if they cease, let there be no hostility except to those who practice oppression. The prohibited month, for the prohibited month, and so for all things prohibited, there is the law of equality. If then anyone transgresses the prohibition against you, transgress you likewise against him. But fear Allah, and know that Allah is with those who restrain themselves. And spend of your substance in the cause of Allah, and make not your own hands contribute to your destruction. But do good, for Allah loves those who do good. And complete the Hajj or Umrah in the service of Allah. But if you are prevented from completing it, send an offering for sacrifice such as you may find, and do not shave your heads until the offering reaches the place of sacrifice. And, if any of you is ill, or has an ailment in his scalp, necessitating shaving, he should, in compensation, either fast, or feed the poor, or offer sacrifice. And when you are in peaceful conditions again, if anyone wishes to continue the Umrah, unto the Hajj, he must make an offering, such as, as he can afford. But, if he cannot afford it, he should fast three days during the Hajj, and seven days on his return, making ten days in all. This is for those whose household is not in the precincts of the sacred mosque, and fear Allah, and know that Allah is strict in punishment. For Hajj are the months well known. If anyone undertakes that duty therein, let there be no obscenity nor wickedness, nor wrangling in the Hajj, and whatever good you do, be sure Allah knows it, and take a provision with you for the journey. But the best of provisions is right conduct. So fear me, O you that are wise. It is no crime in you if you seek of the bounty of your Lord during pilgrimage. Then when you pour down from Mount Arafat, celebrate the praises of Allah, at the sacred monument, and celebrate his praises as he has directed you, even though before this you went astray. Then pass on at a quick pace from the place where it is usual for the multitude so to do, and ask for Allah's forgiveness, for Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. So, when you have accomplished your holy rites, celebrate the praises of Allah as you used to celebrate the praises of your fathers, yea, with far more heart and soul. There are men who say, 
Our Lord, give us your bounties in this world, but they will have no portion in the hereafter. And there are men who say, Our Lord, give us good in this world, and good in the hereafter, and defend us from the torment of the fire. To these will be allotted what they have earned, and Allah is quick in account. Celebrate the praises of Allah during the appointed days, but if anyone hastens to leave in two days, there is no blame on him, and if anyone stays on, there is no blame on him. If his aim is to do right, then fear Allah, and know that you will surely be gathered unto him. There is the type of man whose speech about this world's life may dazzle you, and he calls Allah to witness about what is in his heart. Yet, is he the most contentious of enemies? When he turns his back, his aim everywhere is to spread mischief through the earth and destroy crops and cattle. But Allah loves not mischief. When it is said to him, Fear Allah, he is led by arrogance to more crime. Enough for him is hell, an evil bed indeed, to lie on. And there is the type of man who gives his life to earn the pleasure of Allah, and Allah is full of kindness to his devotees. O you who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly, and follow not the footsteps of the evil one, for he is to you an avowed enemy. If you backslide after the clear signs have come to you, then know that Allah is exalted in power, wise. Will they wait until Allah comes to them in canopies of clouds, with angels in his train? And the question is thus settled. But to Allah do all questions go back for decision. Ask the children of Israel how many clear signs we have sent them. But if anyone after Allah's favor has come to him, substitute something else. Allah is strict in punishment. The life of this world is alluring to those who reject faith, and they scoff at those who believe. But the righteous will be above them on the day of resurrection, for Allah bestows his abundance without measure on whom he will. Mankind was one single nation, and Allah sent messengers with glad tidings and warnings, and with them he sent the book in truth, to judge between people in matters wherein they differed. But the people of the book, after the clear signs came to them, did not differ among themselves, except through selfish contumacy. Allah by his grace guided the believers to the truth, concerning that wherein they differed, for Allah guides whom he will to a path that is straight. Or do you think that you shall enter the garden of bliss without such trials, as came to those who passed away before you? They encountered suffering and adversity, and were so shaken in spirit, that even the messenger, and those of faith who were with him, cried, When will come the help of Allah? Ah, verily, the help of Allah is always near. They ask you what they should spend in charity. Say, Whatever you spend, that is good, is for parents, and kindred, and orphans, and those in want, and for wayfarers, and whatever you do, that is good. Allah knows it well. Fighting is prescribed upon you, and you dislike it, but it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you, and that you love a thing which is bad for you but Allah knows and you know not. They ask you concerning fighting in the prohibited month. Say, fighting therein is a grave offense, but graver is it in the sight of Allah to prevent access to the path of Allah, to deny Him, to prevent access to the sacred mosque and drive out its members. Tumult and oppression are worse than slaughter. Nor will they cease fighting you until they turn you back from your faith if they can. And if any of you turn back from their faith and die in unbelief, their works will bear no fruit in this life. And in the year after, they will be companions of the fire and will abide therein. 
Those who believed and those who suffered exile and fought and strove and struggled in the path of Allah, they have the hope of the mercy of Allah. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. They ask you concerning wine and gambling. Say, in them is great sin and some benefit for men, but the sin is greater than the benefit. They ask you how much they are to spend. Say, what is beyond your needs. Thus does Allah make clear to you his signs, in order that you may consider their bearings on this life and the hereafter. They ask you concerning orphans. Say, the best thing to do is what is for their good. If you mix their affairs with yours, they are your brethren. But Allah knows the man who means mischief from the man who means good. And if Allah had wished, he could have put you into difficulties. He is indeed exalted in power, wise. Do not marry unbelieving women until they believe. A slave woman who believes is better than an unbelieving woman, even though she allure you. Nor marry your girls to unbelievers until they believe. A man-slave who believes is better than an unbeliever, even though he allure you. Unbelievers do, but beckon you to the fire. But Allah beckons by His grace to the garden of bliss and forgiveness, and makes His signs clear to mankind, that they may receive admonition. They ask you concerning women's courses. Say, they are a hurt and a pollution, so keep away from women in their courses, and do not approach them until they are clean. But when they have purified themselves, you may approach them in any manner, time or place, ordained for you by Allah. For Allah loves those who turn to Him constantly, and He loves those who keep themselves pure and clean. Your wives are as a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how you will. But do some good act for your souls beforehand, and fear Allah, and know that you are to meet Him in the hereafter, and give these good tidings to those who believe. And make not Allah's name an excuse in your oaths against doing good, or acting rightly, or making peace between persons. For Allah is one who hears and knows all things. Allah will not call you to account for thoughtlessness in your oaths, but for the intention in your hearts. And He is oft forgiving, most forbearing. For those who take an oath for abstention from their wives, a waiting for four months is ordained. If then they return, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. But if their intention is firm for divorce, Allah hears and knows all things. Divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for three monthly periods, nor is it lawful for them to hide what Allah has created in their wombs. If they have faith in Allah in the last day, and their husbands have the better right to take them back in that period, if they wish for reconciliation, and women shall have rights similar to the rights against them, according to what is equitable. But men have a degree of advantage over them, and Allah is exalted in power, wise. A divorce is permissible only twice. After that, the husbands should either retain their wives together on equitable terms, or let them go with kindness. It is not lawful for you men to take back any of your gifts from your wives except when both parties fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by Allah. If you judges do indeed fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by Allah, there is not blame on either of them if she gives something for her freedom. These are the limits ordained by Allah, so do not transgress them. If any do transgress the limits ordained by Allah, such persons wrong themselves as well as others. So, if a husband divorces his wife irrevocably, he cannot, after that, remarry her until after she has married another husband, and he has divorced her. In that case, there is no blame on either of them if they reunite, provided they feel that they can keep the limits ordained by Allah. Such are the limits ordained by Allah, 
which he makes plain to those who understand. When you divorce women, and they are about to fulfill the term of their idda, either retain them back, or let them go. But do not retain them to injure them, or to take undue advantage. If anyone does that, he wrongs his own soul. Do not treat Allah's signs as a jest, but solemnly rehearse Allah's favors on you, and the fact that he sent down to you the book and the wisdom for your instruction. And fear Allah, and know that Allah is well acquainted with all things. When you divorce women, and they fulfill the term of their idda, do not prevent them from marrying persons of their choice, if they mutually agree on equitable terms. This instruction is for all amongst you who believe in Allah and the last day, that is the course making for most virtue and purity amongst you. And Allah knows and you know not. The mothers shall give suck to their offspring for two whole years, if the father desires to complete the term, but he shall bear the cost of their food and clothing on equitable terms. No soul shall have a burden laid on it greater than it can bear. No mother shall be treated unfairly on account of her child, nor father on account of his child, and heir shall be chargeable in the same way. If they both decide on weaning by mutual consent, and after due consultation, there is no blame on them. If you decide on a foster mother for your offspring, there is no blame on you, provided you pay the mother what you offered, on equitable terms. But fear Allah and know that Allah sees well what you do. If any of you die and leave widows behind, they shall wait concerning themselves four months and ten days. When they have fulfilled their term, there is no blame on you if they dispose of themselves in a just and reasonable manner. And Allah is well acquainted with what you do. There is no blame on you if you make an offer of betrothal or hold it in your hearts. Allah knows that you cherish them in your hearts. But do not make a secret contract with them except that you speak to them in terms honorable, nor resolve on the tie of marriage till the term prescribed is fulfilled. And know that Allah knows what is in your hearts, and take heed of him, and know that Allah is oft forgiving, most forbearing. There is no blame on you if you divorce women before consummation or the vexation of their dower, but bestow on them a suitable gift, the wealthy according to his means, and the poor according to his means, a gift of reasonable amount, is due from those who wish to do the right thing. And if you divorce them before consummation, but after the fixation of a dower for them, then the half of the dower is due to them, unless they remit it, or the man's half is remitted, by him in whose hands is the marriage tie, and the remission of the man's half is the nearest to righteousness, and do not forget liberality between yourselves, for Allah sees well all that you do. Guard strictly your habit of prayers, especially the middle prayer, and stand before Allah in a devout frame of mind. If you fear an enemy, pray on foot or riding, as may be most convenient. But when you are in security, celebrate Allah's praises in the manner He has taught you, which you knew not before. Those of you who die and leave widows should bequeath for their widows a year's maintenance and residence. But if they leave the residence, there is no blame on you for what they do with themselves, provided it is reasonable and Allah is exalted in power, wise. For divorced women, a one-time provision should be paid on a reasonable scale. This is a duty on the righteous. Thus does Allah make clear His signs to you in order that you may understand did you not turn your vision to those who abandoned their homes, though they were thousands in number for fear of death? Allah said to them, Die. Then he restored them to life. For Allah is full of bounty to mankind, but most of them are ungrateful. Then fight in the cause of Allah, and know that Allah hears and knows all things.
Who is he that will loan to Allah a beautiful loan, which Allah will double unto his credit and multiply many times? It is Allah that gives you want or plenty, and to him shall be your return. Have you not turned your vision to the chiefs of the children of Israel? After the time of Moses, they said to a prophet that was amongst them, Appoint for us a king that we may fight in the cause of Allah. He said, It is not possible. If you were commanded to fight, that you will not fight. They said, How could we refuse to fight in the cause of Allah, seeing that we were turned out of our homes and our families? But when they were commanded to fight, they turned back, except a small band among them. But Allah has full knowledge of those who do wrong. Their Prophet said to them, Allah has appointed Talut as king over you. They said, How can he exercise authority over us? when we are better fitted than he to exercise authority, and he is not even gifted with wealth in abundance. He said, Allah has chosen him above you, and has gifted him abundantly with knowledge and bodily prowess. Allah grants his authority to whom he pleases. Allah is all-embracing, and he knows all things. And further their prophet said to them, A sign of his authority is that there shall come to you the Ark of the Covenant with an assurance therein of security from your Lord, and the relics left by the family of Moses and the family of Aaron, carried by angels, in this is a symbol for you, if you indeed have faith. When Talut set forth with the armies, he said, Allah will test you at the stream. If any drinks of its water, he goes not with my army. Only those who taste not of it go with me. A mere sip out of the hand is excused, but they all drank of it, except a few when they crossed the river, he and the faithful ones with him. They said, This day we cannot cope with Goliath and his forces. But those who were convinced that they must meet Allah said, How often by Allah's will has a small force vanquished a big one. Allah is with those who steadfastly persevere. When they advanced to meet Goliath and his forces, they prayed, Our Lord, pour out constancy on us, and make our steps firm. Help us against those that reject faith. By Allah's will, they routed them. And David slew Goliath, and Allah gave him power and wisdom, and taught him whatever else he willed. And did not Allah check one set of people by means of another? The earth would indeed be full of mischief. But Allah is full of bounty to all the worlds. These are the signs of Allah. We rehearse them to you in truth. Verily, you are one of the messengers. Those messengers were endowed with gifts, some above others. To one of them Allah spoke, others he raised to degrees of honor. To Jesus, the son of Mary, we gave clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. If Allah had so willed, succeeding generations would not have fought among each other. After clear signs had come to them, but they chose to wrangle, some believing and others rejecting. If Allah had so willed, they would not have fought each other. But Allah fulfills his plan. O oh, you who believe, spend out of the bounties we've provided for you. Before the day comes when no bargaining will avail, no friendship, no intercession, those who reject faith, they are the wrongdoers. Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting eternal. No slumber can seize Him, nor sleep. His are all things in the heavens and on earth. Who is there that can intercede in His presence except as He permits? He knows what appears to His creatures as before or after or behind them nor shall they compass aught of his knowledge, except as he wills. His throne does extend over the heavens and the earth, and he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them, for he is the Most High, the Supreme in glory. Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Whoever rejects evil and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. And Allah hears and knows all things. Allah is the protector of those who have faith. From the depths of darkness, He will lead them forth into light.
Of those who reject faith, the patrons are the evil ones. From light they will lead them forth into the depths of darkness. They will be the companions of the fire, to dwell therein forever. Have you not turned your vision to one who disputed with Abram about his Lord? Because Allah had granted him power. Abram said, My Lord is he who gives life and death. He said, I give life and death. Said Abram, But it is Allah that causes the sun to rise from the east. Do you then cause him to rise from the west? Thus was he confounded, who in arrogance rejected faith, nor does Allah give guidance to a people unjust. Or take the similitude of one who passed by a hamlet all in ruins to its roofs. He said, Oh, how shall Allah bring it ever to life? After this, it's death. But Allah caused him to die for a hundred years, then raised him up again. He said, How long did you tarry thus? And he said, Perhaps a day or part of a day. And he said, Nay, thou hast tarried thus a hundred years. But look at your food and your drink. They show no signs of age. And look at your donkey. And that we may make of you a sign unto the people. Look further at the bones, how we bring them together and clothe them with flesh. When this was shown clearly to him, he said, I know that Allah has power over all things. Behold, Abram said, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. He said, Do you not then believe? He said, Yea, but to satisfy my own understanding. He said, Take four birds, tame them to turn to you, put a portion of them on every hill, and call to them. They will come to you, flying with speed. Then know that Allah is exalted in power, wise. The parable of those who spend their substance in the way of Allah is that of a grain of corn. It grows seven years, and each year has a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase to whom he pleases, and Allah cares for all, and he knows all things. Those who spend their substance in the cause of Allah, and follow not up their gifts with reminders of their generosity, or with injury, for them their reward is with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Kind words and covering of faults are better than charity, followed by injury. Allah is free of all wants, and he is most forbearing. O you who believe, cancel not your charity by reminders of your generosity, or by injury, like those who spend their substance to be seen of men. But believe neither in Allah nor in the last day. They are, in parable, like a hard barren rock, on which is a little soil, on it falls heavy rain, which leaves it just a bare stone. They will be able to do nothing with aught they have earned, and Allah guides not those who reject faith. And the likeness of those who spend their substance, seeking to please Allah and to strengthen their souls, is as a garden, high and fertile. Heavy rain falls on it, but makes it yield a double increase of harvest. And if it receives not heavy rain, light moisture suffices it. Allah sees well whatever you do. Does any of you wish that he should have a garden with date palms and vines and streams flowing underneath, and all kinds of fruit, while he is stricken with old age, and his children are not strong enough to look after themselves, that it should be caught in a whirlwind, with fire therein, and be burnt up? Thus does Allah make clear to you his signs that you may consider. O you who believe, give of the good things which you have honorably earned, and of the fruits of the earth which we have produced for you, and do not even aim at getting anything which is bad, in order that out of you may give away something which you yourselves would not receive it except with closed eyes, and know that Allah is free of all wants and worthy of all praise. The evil one threatens you with poverty and bids you to conduct unseemly. Allah promises you his forgiveness and bounties, and Allah cares for all, and he knows all things. He grants wisdom to whom he pleases, and he to whom wisdom is granted receives indeed a benefit overflowing. But none will grasp the message but men of understanding. And whatever you spend in charity or devotion, be sure Allah knows it all, but the wrongdoers have no helpers. If you disclose acts of charity, even so it is well, but if you conceal them and make them reach those really in need, that is best for you. It will remove from you some of your stains of evil, and Allah is well acquainted with what you do. It is not required of you, O Messenger, 
to set them on the right path, but Allah sits on the right path whom he pleases. Whatever of good you give benefits your own souls, and you shall only do so seeking the face of Allah. Whatever good you give shall be rendered back to you, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly. Charity is for those in need who in Allah's cause are restricted from travel and cannot move about in the land seeking for trade or work. The ignorant man thinks, because of their modesty, that they are free from want. You shall know them by their unfailing mark. They beg not importunately from all and sundry. And whatever of good you give, be assured, Allah knows it well. Those who in charity spend of their goods by night and by day, in secret and in public, have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Those who devour usury will not stand, except as stands one whom the evil one by his touch has driven to madness. That is because they say, trade is like usury. But Allah has permitted trade and forbidden usury. Those who after receiving direction from their Lord desist, shall be pardoned for the past. Their case is for Allah to judge. But those who repeat the offense are companions of the fire. They will abide therein forever. Allah will deprive usury of all growth, but will give increase for deeds of charity, for he loves not creatures ungrateful and wicked. Those who believe and do deeds of righteousness and establish regular prayers and regular charity will have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. O you who believe, fear Allah, and give up what remains of your demand for usury, if you are indeed believers. If you do it not, take notice of war from Allah and his messenger. But if you turn back, you shall have your capital sums. Deal not unjustly, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly. If the debtor is in a difficulty, grant him time till it is easy for him to repay. But if you remit it by way of charity, that is best for you, if you only knew. And fear the day when you shall be brought back to Allah. Then shall every soul be paid what it earned, and none shall be dealt with unjustly. O you who believe, when you deal with each other, in transactions involving future obligations in a fixed period of time, reduce them to writing. Let a scribe write down faithfully as between the parties. Let not the scribe refuse to write, as Allah has taught him, so let him write. Let him who incurs the liability dictate, but let him fear his Lord Allah and not diminish aught of what he owes. If the party liable is mentally deficient, or weak, or unable himself to dictate, let his guardian dictate faithfully, and get two witnesses out of your own men. And if there are not two men, then a man and two women, such as you choose for witnesses. So that, if one of them errs, the other can remind her. The witnesses should not refuse when they are called on for evidence. Disdain not to reduce to writing your contract for a future period. Whether it be small or big, it is juster in the sight of Allah, more suitable as evidence, and more convenient to prevent doubts among yourselves. But if it be a transaction which you carry out on the spot among yourselves, there is no blame on you if you reduce it not to writing. But take witnesses whenever you make a commercial contract, and let neither scribe nor witness suffer harm. If you do such harm, it would be wickedness in you. So fear Allah, for it is Allah that teaches you, and Allah is well acquainted with all things. If you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe, a pledge with possession may serve the purpose. And if one of you deposits a thing on trust with another, let the trustee faithfully discharge his trust, and let him fear his Lord. Conceal not evidence, for whoever conceals it, his heart is tainted with sin. And Allah knows all that you do. To Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and on earth, whether you show what is in your minds or conceal it. Allah calls you to account for it. He forgives whom he pleases and punishes whom he pleases. For Allah has power over all things. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord, as do the men of faith. Each one of them believes in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers. We make no distinction, they say, between one and another. 
of his messengers, and they say, We hear and we obey, we seek your forgiveness, our Lord, and to you is the end of all journeys. On no soul does Allah place a burden greater than it can bear. It gets every good that it earns, and it suffers every ill that it earns. Pray, Our Lord, condemn us not if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden like that which you did lay on those before us. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden greater than we have strength to bear. Blot out our sins and grant us forgiveness. Have mercy on us. You are our protector. Help us.